I would like to welcome Kai Chan, who is Global CEO of ISS Global Forwarding, a board director and a mentor. With over 25 years of leadership experience in companies such as DHL, Carson, Wagenly Travel, LuxAsia, Kai is a go-getter who is known for her passion for people development and corporate social responsibility. She is an advocate of ethics, compliance, equality, the environment, and our communities. Those who have worked with her know that she has always considered the team and people in general the key pillar for her success and as the source of her personal joy. When you interact with her, you will undoubtedly feel the same. Welcome to today's Change Matters Virtual Summit, Kai. Hi, Margaret. How are you? A lot of readers um, who have got an exposure to my initial drafts of the book Change Matters were asking me about best practices with regards to returning back to the office after COVID. Mm -hmm. Based on your experience, Kai, what has been the key differentiating factor between a successful and an unsuccessful transition? The, the most important thing I always recommend people is communicate as a manager. Why would you want sometimes or most of the time your team to be near you in the same premises in the office and sometimes uh, i would recommend to ask your team members what is their preference because at the end of the day let's be honest when we work it's all about performance and if the performance is there what does it matter where we are while we are performing so i kudos to all our colleagues in in the airport, at the terminal, in a warehouse, or front front uh, uh, runners in, in terms of, you know, servicing customers, et cetera, et cetera. They don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm around you for a couple of hours, I'm much easier um, to access, you know? So I think the transition has everything to do with reasoning, communicating the reasoning, and it's a two-way, um, you know, understanding of why would I feel like that and why would you now prefer to stay at home? We hear it left, right and center that we live in a VUCA world, a volatile and uncertain, complex and ambiguous world. We, we all know it. It's a fast changing environment mm. we are mm. part of. Um, change leaders like you are facing a myriad of changes at the mm. same time. And you need to, in a way, stay at the top of it. At the top of it. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend other change leaders? What should they do to stay at, as much as possible at the top of those changes? Well, first of all, if I would have to go through a change, which happens to me in my environment, work environment all the time, you know, whether we are going into a joint venture or whether we are not going to a joint venture, whether we are opening an office in that region first or in that region first, because we only have that much of, you know, a bandwidth and, and capacity to focus on so much, you know. So it can be yesterday we agreed and tomorrow something happened that um, we need to discuss again. So that causes sometimes stress. But for me, I... I honestly speaking would recommend everybody that um, any change, the first thing I'm asking myself is what is the benefit? What is, if, if there is a change, you know, why do people, human beings always look for the worst? Oh my God, you know, what I thought yesterday is now different than today. But, but then ask yourself, so what's now the difference what, what impact does it have to you? You know, is it the fear, FOMO, fear of missing out? Why didn't I know that? Why is it happened? Why did it happen without me being involved in, in the decision making of potential change? So all these kind of insecurities of certain managers and leaders, you need to put that, try to put that aside and always ask yourself, Somebody must have had a very good reason for that change. Now, I'm now trying to find out what is that good reason if I don't know. And if you find out 
the reason and then ask for the positive reason and says, oh, what's the benefit of doing it now differently? You know, it's a totally different approach than to say, oh my God, we are having another change again. You know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's really a combination of how you, we say it in German, how you echo into the woods, you know, it will, how you shout into the woods, it, the echo will come out in, 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 in a certain way. And if you are, uh, if you are a change leader, and you have to lead the team behind you or with you through a, a path of, you know, un, uh, circumstances where you're not yourself even sure what is the end. Well, try to first of all find out what is the ultimate goal that you are part of a journey. Of, you know, even if it's not defined yet, but uh, but at least have some some pointers that you are looking forward to. So I give you an example. If somebody said, once some, somebody said to me in work, um, Kai, um, you, we, are, we are opening country A first before we open country B. And I was already very engrossed in recruitment, in setting up the system and thinking of translating the, 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 the you know, all these kinds of, and I was like, huh, okay. And what's, what, what is the reason? So set up, I set up a 15 minute conversation with all the stakeholders. And I said, just walk me through so I can then explain it um, in, in, in palatable way to my team. Because my team is sweating right now on subject topic A. Now, if I need to tell, drop everything and change it to now topic B, I need to be on top of the reasoning. I, I need to understand why. And if I understand why, I can spin it in a positive way. Does it make sense to you? Because a lot of times I hear even from my friends in their organization in different industry, oh, we have a travel stop. Okay. Oh, we have an hiring stop. Okay. And I will say, when you tell me that, I will say, and why is that so? Maybe you traveled like intensively in the last 12 months and all of a sudden people think the cost exploded. Has somebody maybe looked into that? Or does, are there no exceptions? Or, you know, gen, don't generalize the negative change, but get into more, um, you know, like a physics, in physics, you 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 you, right. you break it down into little parts and try to understand those little parts first. If you don't understand the big picture, and for me, it's not even a chore anymore. It's a natural reaction because the human brain and the human behavior can be trained if you want to. If you want to think in a lesser stressful way and act in a lesser stressful way, you can train yourself to it. But there must be a will, you know, and I am very focused on keeping a stable mental health during a very unstable environment. I believe that from these questions and answers, one of the key takeaways is indeed these balance between human connections and performance productivity. And something that makes it possible is what you just said in the last moment, the mental health, the stable mental health, because then change leaders can stay at the top of things. Thank you so much, Kai, for your insights, your experiences and your time today. And I look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you.